I was changing up the content a little bit here. Not going to be talking about dating today, although this does apply to dating because everything in your life can apply to your interactions with the opposite sex. But today we're going to be talking about something that I say all the time that really ticks people off, which is the rules do not apply to me. Many times in my life, I've heard people say to me, what do you think the rules don't apply to you? And my answer is always yes. And let me tell you why I think that and why the rules do not apply to you, all right? So first of all, before I even dig into the subject, I think the best book I've ever found on the subject that basically confers the exact same thing that I'm gonna tell you today in a lot of detail is Harry Brown's excellent book called How to Be Free in an Unfree World. We'll put a link up here in the cards or in the description below, but that book is a very libertarian book that talks about this concept I'm going to tell you, but I want to tell you why I believe that the rules don't apply to me and why I don't believe that they apply to anyone. See, the thing to understand about the rules is that when people make rules, there is no moral attachment to those rules. In fact, moral codes themselves are subject to interpretation. I'm not saying that there's not some absolute things that we might call right or wrong. I think using the terminology of right or wrong is not even the correct ter terminology. I think that it, it's more about oh, being aware or less aware or awake as Eckhart Tolle would say in The Power of Now. But it, it's more about making conscious decisions versus unconscious decisions. I think that's probably how he would phrase that. And so we could say more conscious or unconscious or more even beneficial is a very tricky word because it assigns value to things and judgment to things where they don't need to exist. But my whole point in this is that a lot of times what we tend to do is we tend to tie rules to an ethical or moral foundation when those things are not the same. So for example, let's take the speed limit. Let's take the law you need to drive the speed limit. Now this one, a lot of people have no problem breaking within some kind of range that they've justified in their head. So if I'm going five over the speed limit, that's okay. But if I'm going 20 over the speed limit, that's not okay, all right? So the speed limit, if you're like most people, you've probably broken this law and not really cared about it, only cared about not getting caught many times in your life. I don't know anyone who just drives under the speed limit or at the speed limit, all right? I don't, maybe you do, that's fine. But you have to think about why do you feel like that's okay? and. and and first of all, do you believe it's ethically or morally wrong or evil, we could say, to break that law, to drive above the speed limit. So there's two different things here, right? So one, is it okay? Is it ethically okay to break laws that you don't like? Okay, is that is that ethically okay? Is it ever okay to defy the government, to defy uh, essentially a contract, I guess you could say, that you have agreed to fulfill even though you didn't really have a choice in it? All right, so there, there's one subject of, is it okay to break the law? Okay, and then there's a second one, is it okay to speed, right? And those things are two distinct things to think about. If you say, okay, it's never okay to break the law. Anytime you're breaking the law, that is wrong, that is evil, all right? If we're gonna put a moral you know, judgment on this and we care about the moral judgment, then yeah, you should never speed, okay? And you should always listen to whatever the government says, whether it's just or unjust, if it's a law, if people have voted on it, and it is what this government that you live under says, then you should follow it. And if you're not following it, it's, it's wrong. Okay, now I think most people <laughs> can see how that's not accurate, right? When you really think about it that way, yet we tend to follow it, right? We tend to say, oh, well, the rules, we have to follow the rules. And then we use justifications like it's the it's better for society. Well, let me tell you something. You don't owe society anything. You don't owe other people anything. You don't have to do what's best for society. In fact, it's better if you do what's best for you, okay? Because if you try to do what's best for society, like so many well-meaning people do, you actually make up, make things worse, just like trying to fix prices or trying to set minimum wages and things like that, that end up making things worse because you don't know what's actually best, right? It, it's just like giving a homeless person money, right? If you give a homeless person a hundred dollar bill, did you help that person or hurt that person? Well, you might've given them enough money to go and buy a bunch of drugs and overdose and kill themselves, okay? You might've done that. Or for them to drink a bunch of alcohol and get arrested or get hit by a car or cause some other kind of accident or something like that, right? So maybe you didn't help them. Maybe you would've helped them if you gave them five bucks. Maybe you would've helped them if you gave them a sandwich. You don't know what the implications of your actions are, okay? And so when we talk about 
about this. That's why it doesn't make sense to make that justification. And I think most people would agree that just because it's a law doesn't make it right, okay? But we tend to follow that, but I don't, okay? Instead, I look at laws and I say, all right, what is the risk in me not following this law? And does this align with something that is in my best interest? And you always have to bring it back to your best interest. If you don't do that, then the question is, whose interests do you care about? Is the community, is the country, is anything greater than yourself? No, there's not, okay? I know that religion, I know that a lot of social justice and duty has told you that that's true, but that's not true. The, the exception to that is perhaps your family or people that you care about, but again, that is serving a self-interest because it's specifically the people that you care about. If you say that, well, my child is more important to me, okay, that's fine, but it's your child, okay? You are making that choice. And so ultimately it is still a selfish choice. And so what I'm saying is that you have to make choices that are best for you, not best for society or some other interest group. And the way that society manipulates you, government manipulates you, people manipulate you, they try to use that terminology to make some bigger entity more important than yourself, but it's not true, right? The family does this, right? They guilt you. They say, oh, how do you betray your family? Or isn't family important? Isn't blood thicker than water? It's a guilt trip, right? I see this all the time with a lot of my coaching clients. You should do what's in your best interest, okay? Now you shouldn't go out and purposely harm people, but again, you have to do what's in your best interest. And sometimes what's in your best interest is going out and harming people. <laughs> I know that sounds a little bit weird, but if you invest in the stock market, if you ever go to the casino and play poker against people, if you ever compete in a race, if you ever compete in a sport, if you ever do something against another person, you are harming them for your best interest, right? It is in their best interest to win, to win your money, to get your money, to take the prize, to win the, the first place and not you. But if you're competing, if you're going up against someone, you have to do what's in your best interest. You can't just let everyone win. You can't lie down and, you know, especially again in the dating market, guys, what are you gonna do is say like, oh, no, 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 you take the girl. I, I don't wanna compete with you. I don't wanna deprive you of, of, of this, this lovely lady here. It doesn't make any sense, all right? Now, same thing, we could talk about the speed limit itself, right? Because we looked at the one thing, is it always applicable to follow a law, okay? You look at the speed limit. Is it ethically wrong, right? Looking at that one specific law to go faster than a certain speed. Okay, I mean, at some point you could say, well, you're being reckless and you're endangering people, but maybe you're a NASCAR driver and you're really good at that and you can handle that speed and your, your car can handle it. So it, it's a very judgment type of thing, but ultimately what it comes down to is two things, is what is in your best interest and then what is the risk of that, right? People could use this to justify things. They could say, oh, well, what about murder? Is it okay to, to murder someone? In certain situations it is, right? In a war, okay? or let's say that someone is attacking you, trying to rob you, okay. Or someone's trying to kill you, okay. So what about other contexts where you could just kill someone and take their money if you're not gonna get caught? That's where you have to look at your own moral code and your own integrity and the things that you value and then the risk of that and what you'll feel and the guilt of those things, right? It's weird to say that, it's weird to think about that, but you really do have to think about that. And you really have to think about, do other people's rules apply to you or do your rules, right? So when I say the rules don't apply to me, I'm talking about your rules. I don't care what your rules are. I'll go into a place and they'll tell me these are the rules for this place and I'll violate those rules. I don't care. I don't care. What I care about is will I have to suffer a penalty? Will I get fined? Will I get thrown out? Do I care about being thrown out? That I'm, I'm gonna get away with what I can. Why? Because it doesn't apply. It doesn't matter. I have no moral obligation to do what you're asking me to do. I have no moral obligation to follow some law, whether it's just or unjust, right? The only thing that I have to do is follow my compass of what is in my best interest, okay, in protecting the people that I care about, which again is in my best interest, and then weigh the risks of my actions. That is how you should be making your decisions in life. It might seem like a cold and cruel way to be, but it's the only way that actually makes sense, okay? Now, you may suffer negative consequences for those things. That, that's fine, but that's a reward risk ratio that you need to weigh out. But what's still important, okay? And, and before I uh, get into this, real quick, if you haven't already checked out the Bulldog Mindset membership, go click the link there and uh, check it down in the description because I'm going to talk more about a lot of philosophy stuff so you can figure out how to be productive. And what I'm going to talk about next, which is making rules for yourself. I've got a whole thing on that in the membership. But let's talk about this. Let's talk about what is important, which is making rules for yourself, right? So 
even though the other people's rules don't apply to me, okay? And I believe I'm above the rules. It's fine, I love when people say that. Yeah, of course I am. I don't care. I don't care about the rules. I don't care about your moral code or your what your definition of ethics is. It doesn't matter. It only matters what is in my best interest and what the risks are for that. And and then the only other thing that matters is what I'm gonna talk about here is the rules I created for myself. What do I care about? Define your own value system. Maybe I don't want to steal from people because I don't feel good about that because I don't want anything that I haven't earned. Okay, maybe that is a high principle that I hold, right? I got a video on being a man of principles in the Bulldog Mindset Membership where, where I talk about all this stuff, but I have a bunch of principles, but I don't want anything I haven't earned. Why? Because I won't feel good about it. I know it. I, I want to know that everything that I have, I earned it myself. So I have a rule for myself. So I don't want stuff I haven't earned. That's also why I'm not gonna kill people and take their stuff because I don't want stuff I haven't earned, right? Another you know, high principle is I don't allow how people treat me to define how I treat them because my character and how I want to live and how I want to come across is not a product of other people's interactions with me. It's me. That's who I want to represent, who I want to be in this life. And so those principles are going to guide things. So anyway, I have a bunch of rules, but they're the rules I created for myself, right? And some of those rules might coincide with laws. They might coincide with rules that people put in buildings or organizations or groups, or they might not, okay? And when they don't coincide, then I'm gonna make my choice based on the risk. And that is always gonna be the way that I'm gonna operate. So when I say the rules don't apply to me, I mean it. Your rules don't apply to me, my rules apply to me, then that's how you should live as well.